Hello, everyone. Um, the focus of my capstone presentation is uh, Toronto's natural areas. Um, Toronto's natural areas occur within uh, the city's natural heritage system, which constitutes roughly 17% of the city's uh, total area, or 11,000 hectares, so quite a substantial piece of land. Um, for about 200 years now, or since the time of European settlement, these areas have been subject to numerous uh, human influences, beginning, of course, with uh, forest cle clearing, uh, leading then into agricultural practices, and then to urban development and urban activity, both of which now persist um, in the present day. Um, <clears throat> urban activity can take many forms. However, the result is a number of stresses that are placed upon um, Toronto's natural areas. Um, these stresses can take the forms of air, water, and soil pollution, uh, soil compaction, habitat fragmentation, um, and many others. Um, the cumulative effect of these stresses is a general degradation of the quality of Toronto's natural areas um, through a reduction in biodiversity and ecological functions, which then, of course, leads to um, an inhibition of their, or inhibiting of their capacity to provide a broad range of ecological services for the city's residents. <clears throat> this past summer, I had the opportunity to participate in a collaborative uh, monitoring and research project that looked to establish a baseline condition of natural cover within the city of Toronto um, in order to understand its current condition and to provide a measure against which future monitoring projects could be compared. Um, this study used um, the vegetation sampling protocol to collect information such as uh, vegetation structure and vegetation composition, as well as environmental characteristics and disturbance. Um, it's uh, important to note at this point that uh, this monitoring project uh, is, uh, contributes to a larger VSP monitoring project across southern Ontario, which now includes, I think, close to uh, 7,000 plots. So the objectives of my study, um, the broad objective, was to understand the quality of Toronto's natural areas. And I do this by assessing the vegetation composition using uh, mean coefficient of conservatism, or mean CC, and weedless indicators. Um, and this was approach uh, taken um, in a similar project done in the Lake Simcoe uh, watershed. <clears throat> In doing this, uh, I will compare the mean coefficient of conservatism and weedless scores across um, areas that have been in designated in Toronto as um, environment environmentally significant and areas that do not have that uh, designation. We'll also do this across uh, for a successional stage. We'll also look to describe and present the, uh, the sort of the state of invasive plants um, across the city's natural areas. And um, finally, I will briefly discuss the results in the context of uh, Toronto's draft biodiversity strategy. So in the map on the right here, you can see uh, the plots that were sampled throughout this uh, collaborative monitoring project. Um, plots were randomly selected from a, a grid laid across Toronto's natural areas. Um, and it's important to note that sampling was limited to uh, public lands or lands directly under the management of uh, the city. Um, and there was some stratification in our selection of plots. So you can see here that we wanted to make sure there was a, a relatively equal balance of ESA plots versus non-ESA plots. Um, in terms of habitat type, we focused predominantly on forested and semi-forested areas. <clears throat> I won't delve into this too deeply because um, I think Mamta did a great job of presenting um, the VSP uh, method. Um, however, I'm just going to mention some of the uh, elements that are relevant to my study. So um, as mentioned before, we uh, established uh, close to 200 um, circular permanent sampling plots across the city. Um, and while there are uh, several VSP modules, um, my st uh, study uh, only analyzes the data collected of about the absolute cover of all plants uh, present within the plot. <clears throat> In order to assess the quality of uh, native vegetation, um, this study uses uh, the mean coefficient of conservatism, which is a floristic quality assessment. Um, it's based on the coefficient of conservatism scores assigned by Olden, Bukowski, and Sutherland um, for native plants in southern Ontario. So the, the way it works is that plants will receive a score on a 0 to 10 scale, um, with lower scores indicating um, plant communities that can tolerate a high degree of disturbance, whereas higher scores um, are associated with plant communities that are more sensitive and unique. <clears throat> 
Um, so within each plot, every native plant receives a score, and then you calculate the average of those scores. Um, and the average score will indicate the average capacity of the native plants at tolerating to dis disturbance. <clears throat> to assess the quality of non-native vegetation, um, I used the uh, weedless indicator as developed by Dr. Pirat Mladenovic, um, which is based on the weediness index uh, scores assigned by Oldham, Bukowski, and Sutherland for all non-native plant species in southern Ontario. So a, a non-native plant may receive a score from negative 1 to negative 3 based on its invasiveness, with negative 1 being the least invasive and negative 3 being the most, uh, most invasive. Um, <clears throat> so the way it works is you calculate the average uh, weediness index score uh, per plot, and then you plug it into this equation, which includes some elements of species richness. And the result is that you receive a score on a 0 to 100 scale. Um, scores closer to zero indicate a vegetation composition that has uh, a higher presence or aggressiveness of non-native plants, whereas higher scores indicate uh, a vegetation composition with a lower presence or aggressiveness of non-native plants. <clears throat> so this, uh, this was the uh, preliminary results from the study. So you can see up here in the top right um, that uh, of the 193 City of Toronto plots, um, the, the range of scores sort of occupy a mid to lower range on these indicators. Um, and that is sort of represented in the table here at the bottom, which presents the percentage of plots that fall into the combined categories of the two indicators. So as you can see, roughly half of all plots fell into the mean CC score of 2 to 4, while, uh, while also falling into the weedless score of 40 to 60. So sort of around the mid-range uh, on the lower end there. Um, you may notice, of course, that there are no plots within what you might call the higher quality range of these indicators, which isn't entirely surprising given that um, you know, uh, centuries of degradation mean that Toronto's natural areas are not truly representative of their pre-settlement uh, condition. Um, it was uh, tempting at this point to compare these scores to other studies that have been done using the mean CC um, and weedless uh, indicators. However, it's important to note that um, we did not include any wetlands in our sampling, and typically these areas uh, receive higher mean CC scores. Um, so comparing them to some other urban uh, studies that have been done in urban centers would be uh, a little misleading. Um, and similarly, in the Lake Simcoe monitoring project, um, there was many uh, plots that received a score on the weedless scale of 100, indicating no native plants. Um, and so, uh, and, and then that's sort of just indicative of the difference between the landscapes in these two areas. Toronto is much more built up, obviously, and uh, has a higher density of urban activity. Um, Here's a map presenting the mean CC or floristic quality of the plots across Toronto. And you can notice here that there's some concentrations of what you might call high quality or relatively higher quality. So you can see here in High Park, also in the northwest portion of the Don River, as well as um, Highland Creek and Morningside Park out in the east there. There's also concentrations, of course, of lower quality, such as in the northern portions of the Humber River the sort of central southern part of the Don and uh, sort of along sort of the northern reaches of uh, Toronto. <clears throat> um, to sort of provide a, a finer scope of analysis, uh, plots were classified by a uh, successional stage based on the shade tolerance capacity of their plants. So you can see here that um, 10 of the plots were in the early successional stage, 83 in mid-successional, and 100 in the sort of later successional stage. Um, and um, the literature suggests that as forests increase in successional stage, so too does uh, floristic quality. And you can sort of see that general trend here, although it's interesting to note um, that the difference between the mid-successional and late serial plots um, is really quite marginal and was not at all statistically significant. Um, However, in the weedless category, that is not the case, where late serial plots uh, have a uh, significantly higher score than the other two in terms of their uh, non-native species composition. <clears throat> um, so we performed a regression analysis of the plots here. Um, and I think um, what's, this can be sort of like an important tool for informing management across the city. 
Um, so obviously, higher scores on both of the axes indicate a higher quality of native and non-native vegetation. So the plots up in these sort of upper regions are what you might call the higher quality plots. Um, and these areas would certainly be appropriate for uh, protection against uh, uh, stresses or indeed conservation. The plots in the sort of lower region, which score poorly on the weedless scale, but somewhat well on the mean CC scale, would be appropriate for invasive species removal or management. Um, the plots that score relatively high on the weedless scale, but are uh, somewhat on the, the bottom end of the mean CC scale, um, would be appropriate for uh, habitat restoration or planting to increase the sort of quality of native species. So we'll transition now into invasive plants, and I just wanted to sort of present this uh, map that uh, shows the uh, composition of native versus non-native species across uh, the city of Toronto's natural areas, or across the plots, I should say. So you can sort of see that non-native species uh, are pretty much everywhere in that sort of 41 to 69 percent of all composition range. Um, however, moving further into this analysis, we wanted to sort of focus on these species which have been categorized as, this, uh, as high priority by the City of Toronto for management. And the reason for this being that they pose the greatest threat to native biodiversity um, through mechanisms of uh, seed dispersal, uh, you know, a capacity for, uh, very high capacity for growth, and uh, also the capacity of, or sorry, the capability of being able to change sort of environmental conditions to suit uh, their proliferation. Um, so this graph presents the number of plots that contained um, these priority species. And I think it's inter interesting to note that these top four species, so common buckthorn, garlic mustard, mantle of the maple, and dog strangling vine, occur within uh, well over uh, three quarters of all the plots we sampled this summer, sort of demonstrating just how common some of these species are across uh, Toronto's landscape. Um, in these graphs, uh, the uh, plots containing these uh, species um, uh, are, you, excuse me, um, the scores for the plots containing these species are placed along the axes, and the circles are sized to the absolute cover of the species within the plot. So you can see sort of for common buckthorn here and indeed for the Manitoba maple that it sort of tapers off in size towards the end with a concentration towards sort of that middle value um, right there. Um, with the Manitoba maple here, I think um, it shows an interesting pattern. So in these sort of higher floristic quality plots, you have a very low um, a species absolute cover of Manitoba maple. And I think this presents an opportunity for proactive um, management. Um, so these, these sort of uh, lower absolute covers could be sort of seedlings um, or, you know, sort of the, the front line of invasion, if you will, um, where the city could go in and remove these species and thereby um, ensure that these scores don't slide down the scales. <clears throat> Um, this is uh, just a map presenting the absolute cover of uh, common buckthorn across the city. Um, and you can see there's some sort of, there's a positive area. So in High Park, there's obviously a low absolute cover of uh, common buckthorn. And indeed, the same is true in Morningside um, and along uh, Highland Creek. And, but along the Don and the upper reaches of the Humber, it seems that they are really quite uh, abundant. <clears throat> All right, so I'll transition to now um, assessing the city's ESA plots versus non-ESA plots. Um, and as you would expect, um, the ESA designation performs better in both of the indicators um, than the non-ESA plots. And this could mean uh, two things. It could mean, um, of course, that the city is uh, proficient at identifying the areas that are worthy of this designation. Um, and, or and or it could mean um, that uh, the ESA protection is effective at uh, protecting native biodiversity. Um, with that said, however, I'd just like to note that um, there are certainly a number of non-ESA plots that uh, exist in the higher range of the scales, which I think present an opportunity for further designation. Um, as far as I know, the last time the city performed uh, um, an assessment of and added uh, environmentally significant areas was in 2012. 
Um, an example of an area that might be worthy of this is North Park, which is an area in North York, which received a mean CC score of 4.2 and a weedless score of 45.6. So scoring relatively high on the scales, and um, perhaps this area could benefit from that protection. Um, <clears throat> so in terms of how these relate uh, to Toronto's uh, draft biodiversity strategy, um, the, the strategy sort of sets out a vision of Toronto's natural areas and uh, that sort of like a refuge for um, its native biodiversity. Um, and the means by which it uh, suggests that this ought to be done is uh, ecological uh, or habitat restoration. Um, and this is certainly an effective tool at um, improving the uh, native uh, vegetation composition of these areas. However, I think um, it's important, uh, I think the results of this study suggest that um, these efforts will also need to be coupled with invasive species management, uh, as well as efforts to protect uh, what high quality um, is present within the city already. <clears throat> All right, so I think the results of this study sort of confirm um, what we suspect um, insofar as Toronto's natural areas are certainly degraded by the influence of uh, human activity. Um, and this is certainly reflected in its vegetation composition. Um, similarly, um, invasive plants have taken advantage of this disturbed environment through human activities like uh, recreation, uh, overuse, um, proximity to urban gardens. Um, <clears throat> and. Uh, I think that this will pose a very sort of pressing um, um, uh, pressure on the city of Toronto to manage these as uh, time goes forward, especially with the influence of climate change, which will likely uh, affect Toronto's native, more sensitive native biodiversity um, in a negative manner. Um, with that said, however, uh, I think there's some relatively high quality natural areas within Toronto. Um, and I think that, uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, it leaves the opportunity to consider further ESA designation or just other tools of conservation. Um, one that comes to mind from my experience this summer uh, is the time we spent in Glen Stewart Ravine. And um, it was sort of part of a habitat restoration pro uh, project by the city. And what they did essentially was uh, fence off the sides of the trails so that uh, dogs, uh, cyclists and humans couldn't go through these areas um, and uh, affect them negatively, trample on sort of the native wildflowers or seedlings. And the result was uh, a, a, a large uh, area of plantings that were, had very healthy seedlings. Um, in terms of future work and research, I think it would be good to try and incorporate um, private lands into a study of this kind because um, private lands in Toronto obviously uh, constitute a large portion of its natural heritage system, and these areas are also uh, sort of vectors for invasion given their adjacency to uh, urban gardens and other human activities. Um, and I hope that the results of this study can be compared in the future um, to monitoring so that we can understand how Toronto's uh, vegetation composition um, transforms over time for better or worse. Um, oh. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. Sorry, there we go. Um, so I'd like to extend my thanks to my internal supervisor, uh, Professor uh, Piorec Mladenovic, for her support and guidance through this process. I'd also like to thank Colin Hubert from the City of Toronto for his coordination of this pro uh, project during the summer and his uh, help in sort of determining what direction I wanted to take with this project. I would like also to thank my um, VSP crew from this summer um, for having collected the data that made this research possible. I would like to thank Richard Dickinson for his instruction in um, plant identification and botany. That was uh, certainly very helpful at the beginning of the summer. I would also like to thank Wazel Bukowski and David Bradley for their help in identifying uh, unknown plant species. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to take advantage of my role as the moderator and jump at the headline, the headline of questions. Certainly. Um, so you had those two uh, metrics, uh, and one of which was, I, re I recall this, the 
the CC one, mm -hmm. mean CC had to do with successional stage. So my question is just, do, are you intending that those two axes are entirely orthogonal or, or independent of one another or, or not? Um, when they were plotted by successional stage? Well, just, just in general, conceptually, are they two independent me measures? Um, I would say yes, of course, um, given that they're based on different uh, elements of the plant community. However, I think um, the usefulness of this, plotting them together, um, comes from the fact that they respond um, in similar ways to disturbance and other factors within um, Toronto's natural areas. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's kind of just like a helpful tool for prioritizing areas of, uh, of management. Okay, so um, like you use the word to, you know, quality, to identify high quality areas. So is the idea with this mean CC, which is a successional index, if I recall? No, it's, uh, it's sort of, um, it, it, it's related to succession. However, it's um, based on the, the capacity of a plant community to tolerate disturbance. Um, so it's, it's a floristic quality assessment. Um, Okay, can you just remind, actually, maybe just, just my question should be, can you remind me what the mean CC is? Then, then maybe. Yeah, certainly. So um, it's the average score of the native plants in each plot. Um, and it's based on the scores assigned by Oldham et al. Um, so you can see here that higher scores um, are typically as associated with more unique and sensitive plant communities, typically found in later succession. Um, whereas lower scores are uh, associated with plants that can tolerate a high degree of disturbance. Okay. I guess I'm just struggling to see how that's different, say, from successional state. Um, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Um, well, I think that the two uh, classifications are, are certainly associated. Um, I, I, I think the reason we use this is um, it's, it's, it's sort of a widely used um, measure within um, floristic quality assessment studies, mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's it's sort of got a proven track record, if you will, of um, being able to demonstrate um, areas of um, uh, um, high quality plant communities. Um, okay, I guess I just wonder. I mean. Uh, so high would be a high number, like 9, 10 is a high quality? Indeed. Okay, and okay, and, and those are sensitive, sensitive to disturbance. Mm -hmm. I guess I just wonder, like, why would a community, why would, I guess, why would a community be low quality if it's zero to three? What would that, what, what would be an example of a low quality community? Um, well, uh, in terms of plants that receive like sort of lower scores on the scale, yeah. um, there's uh, plants like uh, poison ivy, for example, okay. which can occur in these very highly disturbed habitats. Um, that receives a score of zero on the scale, um, okay. whereas uh, a tree like the black oak receives an eight on this scale, given that it, it needs you know a protection from okay. a human influence. Good. Okay, sorry to, uh, questions from the audience? <laughs> no, hopefully not. Questions? I'd like to draw attention to the, what I would call the, like, far west of the city of Toronto. I, it, I believe you found that that is not an area that has a heavy uh, um, problem with invasives. Is that? Oh, the invasives? Yeah. Uh -huh. It. It see my uh, impression. I don't have a, <laughs> barely a, a map in front of me. That you, you see, a uh, Mimico and a, a Tobico creeks are the major. Natural areas and yeah, around here. You mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, my view is from st being in them is that you have a a high uh, dominance of native species because the the dominant tree is the is the black walnut and 
that has a jugulin toxicity effect, which is good to keep away invasives. Is this the correct understanding of the? Um, I'm afraid uh, I wouldn't be able to answer that um, currently, but it's, it's quite possible that a relationship between its allelopathic tendencies and the low invasion um, in the West there could have a, a sort of relationship. But I hope that's studied in the future because I think that is a, a key to solving some of these invasive problems of the rest of the city. Mm -hmm. Fair point. Nice work, Graham. Um, I had a question. You indicated that there was a higher percentage of invasives in the late serial communities, which is oh, kind of. No, no. Oh, uh, sorry. Am I incorrect about that? So, sorry. Yeah. Um, the late serial communities have a higher readless scale, so they have. Lower. Yeah, it's a okay. lower degree of invasion. Right. Okay. Sorry, I know it's. Cancel kind that of, question. It, it, <laughs> I, I did. I was also wondering, though, if you found any novel kind of invasive species, like on the front end of migration into the city, in all of the VSP studies. Um, Important information. Uh, not, uh, not that I can recall. Especially, I mean, there was certainly some habitats that were, uh, you know, invaded to the point <laughs> where it might have been helpful to have a machete to sort of uh, right. walk through. <laughs> but any kind of so like new, like new invasive species, like ones that aren't necessarily currently a real huge problem in Toronto, but maybe are a problem further south that maybe are, you're seeing on the front end of a kind of introduction into the city. Um, Anything that popped up? I think uh, one that we did see here and there, and I'm not sure if it's, it's sort of moving northwards or not, mm -hmm. but is uh, purple loosestrife. Okay. Um, and that wasn't included in the um, the city's list there. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I do know that um, I spoke to some community members, and I'm not sure how accurate this is, but they were saying that um, along this you know, certain sort of pathway in, I believe, the west of Toronto, mm -hmm. uh, purple loosestrife had sort of taken over um, from uh, other wildflower species that, would, that were actually native and uh, okay. more sensitive. OK. Thanks. <laughs> no worries. So I'm just curious, um, it seems from, from this kind of analysis that the city or, or the, the, the aim, because you're valuing unique and sensitive plants uh, and the way that you're prioritizing them, that it seems like that's the goal. And I'm just curious why would one not have another goal, for instance, resilience, of the plant community, uh, mixed stand, um, you know, a sort of high quality habitat that may not be unique and sensitive. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering what you'd say to something like that. I mean, I definitely think that uh, is something worth looking at. Uh, resiliency, obviously, to um, urban pressures and indeed climate change is an important um, thing that we have to consider moving forward in management of our natural areas. Um, I, I think, however, um, Mean CC and sort of prioritizing sensitive plant communities is, is related to creating uh, a, a, a robust uh, native biodiversity. We want to sort of make these natural areas resemble their pre-settlement states as much as we can, um, given that uh, that supports um, other forms of wildlife, not just floristic uh, biodiversity, but wildlife as well. Yeah, that's what I would say. Yeah, this might, in a way, be coming back to John's initial questions and confusion, but uh, I guess you're building on this kind of edifice of an expert system. So Oldham and mm -hmm. so forth made some decisions and priorities, and uh, I wonder how that plays out in a couple. So, no, how did they handle Norway maple, uh, for example? So you'd think of that as a as a invasive species that's that's a problem, but it's quite resistant to other invasive species coming in. Mm. Um, 
and uh, you know, so how, how does how does that play out in these metrics? And I I wonder whether some of this framework should kind of be rethought uh, out in in you know, there's there's species that are resistant to other things coming in, but they're not necessarily desirable. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, species to have, and there may be uh, species that are desirable to have, but are not very resilient to other species coming in. So it, it seems like there's a multifactorial kind of problem that that you've you've simplified in a certain way. Yeah, and I, I definitely think um, uh, certain elements that you mentioned there could be incorporated into these types of indicators. Um, now, were you were you saying that like th there's Native plants or invasive plants? No, that, how is Norway maple handled? How is Norway maple handled? Oh, well, it's a, an invasive species, I believe, with a score of negative three being the most invasive. No, but on the mean CC well, index? It's not included. Mean CC only applies to native species. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you.